the very last thing that I'd like to do is to give an example of how we can apply the fundamental theorem of finite cyclic groups um, to really write down all the information there is to know about one uh, about a cyclic group. So here we're going to use a nice familiar example. Let's take a look at the integers mod 20, z mod 20z, and let's create what's called a lattice of subgroups for z mod 20z. Now, what this means is we want to have some sort of drawing that shows all of the different sub subgroups of our given group. Here our group is z mod 20z. Uh, and here, since we just discovered a theorem for writing down um, all of the subgroups of z mod 20z, we should be able to draw this picture. And we want to draw them at sort of certain heights um, and in a meaningful way to indicate sort of any elements that happen to overlap between subgroups. So hopefully we'll discuss how this goes as we go along. Now by the fundamental theorem, we know that z mod 20z is a cyclic, a nice finite cyclic group, and it has a cyclic subgroup of order d, where d is a divisor of 20. It's got one for each of those divisors, and in fact these are all of the subgroups of z mod 20. So we don't have to worry about any other types of subgroups popping up that aren't cyclic ones that have these particular orders. So in order to find all of the subgroups of z mod 20, uh, what we need to do is list all of the divisors of 20, just the order of the group, and those divisors are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. So here what I've done is I've started kind of with the largest and I'm intending to work my way down in size, and I'm going to draw these pictures. So I'm going to start with the largest group that there is, the group of order 20, that's all of z mod 20z and that is the group generated by the number 1. I'm going to use that, you know, I have other choices for generator that I could use if I wanted to, but I'm going to use the nice easy one. I'm going to use 1 to generate 20. So here, the, the group is the biggest thing there is. It's the largest structure, so I want to draw it on top. It's the group generated by 1. And then I'm going to move my way down, so that was easy. What I'd like to do next is draw in the group generated, uh, the group of order 10. Now the group of order 10 is going to be the group generated by that complementary uh, factor. So the group of order 10 is going to be the group generated by 2. If I go through the integers 0 through 19, and I only look at the even ones in there, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, blah, 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 I'm going to get precisely half of those 20 integers. So the group generated by 2, in fact, has order 10 here. So what I've drawn so far is I've drawn way up high the whole group, z mod 20, and then here, this group, this uh, group generated by the element 2, that's my subgroup of z mod 20 of order 10. Now I can go on from there. I can say, okay, z mod 20 has this subgroup of order 10, it's the group generated by 2, and 10 has some divisors. The divisors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. So beneath, as subgroups of this group of order 10, I'm going to have these other cyclic subgroups. So let me go over that again. z mod 20z is my initial group, and it has precisely one subgroup of each of, of uh, the orders of these divisors, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Started with the whole group, I found the unique subgroup of order 10, and in fact, that subgroup of order 10 is a cyclic group. As such, it must have subgroups of order 1, 2, 5, and 10. And those subgroups of order 1, 2, 5, and 10 are subgroups of the whole big group, z mod 20. So the subgroups of order 1, 2, 5, and 10 of the whole group have to live inside this subgroup of order 10, uh, since this subgroup must have them and they are the only subgroups with these orders inside the larger group. So right here, here now is my larger group, my group of order 10, and it's going to have subgroups of order 2 and order 5, and the only element that's going to be in common from those subgroups, which you could check by examination, is sort of the trivial subgroup, which is the group generated by the additive identity, which here is 0. So that's a little bit weird. Here's way down at the bottom of my diagram is this other sort of easy thing to draw in. The group generated by the additive identity, the group generated by zero, and that is my subgroup with only one thing in it. The only thing in there is zero. 
over here what I have drawn is I have the group generated by 4 and I have the group generated by 10. Now let's think about this. The group generated by 10 is going to be the one with order 2. If I looked, modding everything by 20, and I start with the element 10. 10 squared inside this group is 20, which is really 0. And so this group generated by the element 10 has order 2. According to my previous theorem, it's just, it's just the set of elements 0 and 10, and that's this group right here. This group generated by the element 4 has order, complementary factor of 20, so this group generated right here by 4 has order 5. It's a little weird. You just have to think about them, but the group generated by the element 4 has order 5. And so what I've done right here is I've gotten everything that I would have wanted. I have, um, with the exception of one group, so I have the group of size, the subgroup of size 1, the subgroup of size 2, that's this guy right here, the subgroup of size 5, it's this one here, the subgroup of size 10, which is here, and the subgroup of size 20. The only thing that I'm missing is I don't have my subgroup that's generate, uh, that contains four elements here. So Zima 20Z should have a cyclic subgroup of order 4 on here. And in fact, I can draw that element in right here. It is the group generated by the element 5. So 5, 0, 5, 10, 15 is the set of elements in Z mod 20 Z. That's the subgroup of order 5. And notice that it contains this subgroup of order, this cyclic subgroup of order 2, which is the group generated by 10. So I've drawn this group generated by 5 up here because it contains this subgroup generated um, by 10. Um, but it does not, for instance, contain the whole group generated by 2. Um, it shares the, the set of things that is common to the group generated by 2 and the group generated by 5 is the group generated by 10. So I draw that here as though it's kind of contained in both of these things. Um, and the only thing above both of these things is the whole group here. Uh, and so this is what I would call the lattice of subgroups for Z mod 20 Z. If I take a look at this picture, all of my different subgroups are here and the ways that they interact, which subgroups, um, since 10 is a subgroup of 2 and a subgroup of 5, I've drawn it sort of lower in the picture, so it's contained in each of these, um, and things, the only thing that's contained in each of these is the trivial subgroup down here, so I've sort of shown, shown things sharing in the proper light. After studying these slides and your textbook, uh, here are the things that I would hope that you are able to do. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is understand the statement of the fundamental theorem of finite cyclic groups and be able to say what the Euler phi function is. Um, for my class, the, the fundamental theorem of finite cyclic groups is so important that I very frequently ask you to give it back to me by heart. Um, and I'll certainly be expecting you to be able to use it. That's a very important one to make sure that you know and understand. The next thing I'd like you to be able to do is to write all elements of a cyclic group as a power of a given generator. So either using Excel or by hand, um, if I tell you, here's a group, find its generator, and then express all other elements as a power of that generator, that's going to be something that you would need to be able to do in order to compute orders of elements, uh, and that's something that I'd like you to be able to do. Third, I'd like you to be able to find all elements of a given order in a cyclic group. There's an example of that done in these slides. Uh, that could be viewed as a consequence of the fundamental theorem. And last, I'd like you to do a little bit of practice uh, creating a lattice of subgroups of a finite cyclic group. 